Games Workshop push fit models are certainly a mixed bag. For some models, they're very, very useful, being able to take very overly complicated instructions down to just a few parts. But on the other hand, they'd be very poor. Small parts, things that easily break when you push them, mono pose, only one weapon loadout, and lacking in any sort of customization. Generally, I'm fine with push fit models. They are pretty good for new players because they're much simpler to put together and can provide things pretty quickly and get stuff on the board. And new players probably aren't too concerned with customization or different weapon loadouts when they're first starting. I definitely appreciate the chunkier models, the bigger models being push fit because it's a lot easier to put together something that looks like this versus something that looks like this. And let's be fair to Games Workshop, there's absolutely no way you could have all that customization, all those different weapon loadouts, all that movable parts, and still be push fit. Right? Wrong. As many people pointed out, there is this thing that I guess you may have heard of called Gundam. Now, I'm not big into anime. There's only really three good anime that actually exist. Fight me. But I have heard of Gundam, and I understand the concept of Gundam. It's been around for decades. Giant, cool robots fighting it out in some cool battles, and there's a massive market for these models. These models are called Gunpla, which is short for Gundam Plastic Models, or long for Gunn. I've certainly seen the round in stores and online, but I've never really been interested in actually picking one up. But after many, many comments, I figured... This is something I should really look into. If I really want to understand the positives and negatives of push fit models in Games Workshop, I should have a look at some of the competition out there. And Gunpla seems to be the main thing that a lot of people are talking about. It seems the general consensus are very well designed push fit models that can be more complicated and something that really has been around for decades. So why isn't Games Workshop doing this? The only way to find out is to actually buy one and put one together. So that's what I did. To start off with, I actually didn't really know anything about Gunpla. I don't even know if I'm saying Gunpla right. Is it Gunpla? Gunpla? Who cares? Let's move on. In the end, I just replied to one of the comments about Gunpla, so this video is entirely your fault. I basically asked them what they would suggest, what kind of recommendations would they have, and they gave some really nice information, some great examples for me to start with. I did a little bit of my own research just to have a look at these models, and the first couple that were suggested were the ones that I kind of think about when I think of Gunpla, these kind of giant, like, boxy-looking robots, these almost Transformer-esque designs, very boxy, but very cool. And, you know, scrolling through, looking at all these different ones, going, oh, which one should I get, and then... What is that? The grace, the elegance, the edginess. I couldn't possibly not buy this one. I mean, look at it. And look at the name. Death Scythe Hell. Death Scythe, one word, by the way. This is perfect. I'm, I've got to buy this right away. Look, yes, I am a child and saw something very cool and immediately wanted to buy it. But this seemed like the perfect opportunity to get into Gundam and buy something that looked cool, something that I would actually enjoy doing. And also, it is kind of edgy and funny. And a week goes by because I've got to wait for it to be delivered. And I kind of forget about it until it arrives. And I realized that I've made a massive mistake. So there's the entry grade models, which are for your beginners, real grade, which is kind of the more challenging, but the kind of standard scale that these things are built in. I didn't look properly about Death Scythe Hell. I just kind of looked at the name and thought it was way too cool to pass up. This thing is master grade, which if I'm reading Wikipedia, right, because I didn't really do any other research because Wikipedia kind of does everything for me, is the second highest grade you can get. I have not built Gundam before, and when I opened the box, oh boy, look at all of this. Sprues upon sprues of tiny parts, giant parts, different colors. Oh, I'm, I'm way in over my head here. And for about a month, that's how it remained, in the box, on the sprues. But one weekend, I thought, no, enough is enough. I'm not a coward. I'm going to put this together today, no matter what happens. I'm not going to let this sit here like all of my Warhammer on my pile of shame. This is getting done right now. All the instructions are in Japanese. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. And you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Oh my glad it's the 2020s and Google Lens exists. Now, to be fair to you in the instructions, while all of the words are in Japanese, the actual pictures are really, really good. And whilst there's all these icons and stuff that I didn't know what it meant, I kind of could understand what it was asking me to do on these pictures. There were a couple of things I didn't really know, but it looks like a pretty decent set of instructions. Using Google Lens reveals certain things that you really should know about this, so it's nice that that exists. Specifically, one of the really good things about the instructions are these little V icons here, which tell you which orientation that you should have the pieces, especially these smaller ones. It's a very nice way to display this, and it's something that was very crucial in putting this thing together. And the icons themselves are fairly self-explanatory. There's a couple which you would really need to understand those 
options of the archons for assemble this first versus assemble this last are interchangeable if you don't actually know what the words are telling you to do so it's nice to see the descriptions through google translate but at the end of the day the icons are well made enough that they are fairly self-explanatory the majority of the words here are actually just lore and information about the model which i thought was quite interesting to translate now knowing nothing about gundam and this probably being poorly translated by google i have no idea how accurate this is or if this is even remotely close but this is what it says the original plan of operation meteor no idea what that is was to drop several colonies to earth and take advantage of the chaos to overwhelm the earth with five gundams it was a ruthless thing that involved people a few minutes before the operation was launched professor g who was anticipating the duo's body muttered that they were not convinced by the operation that would with braided hair oh that hang on that's actually put the key of that guy on hang on one sec Operation would sacrifice the colony they were born and raised in. Steal Death Scythe. You want me to go down to Earth with Death Scythe without dropping the colony? Of course, as a Grim Reaper. A Grim Reaper, isn't that much better than a mass murdering hero? And so the duo... Is this the one killer, actually? In AC0195, he threw himself into a battle with no end in sight. Along the way, he gets hurt many times. Gets captured in counters, passing ways, and even loses his Gundam. However, with the help of Professor G and others... You do a revive from hell with their partners and cut and slashed and slashed, thus achieving absolute peace. Also, it was supposed to be AC0196. The seas of conflict were still simmering. Also, I know that this is Gundam and anime, but does this guy look like he would be the person who would ride in a Gundam called Death Scythe Hell? The boy who was carrying out the task of increasing and decreasing the OZ was about to take his own life by destroying the association with long braided hair and Mackie that reached the bottom. It is characterized by costumes that make you. Oh god, there's a whole other page. Hang on. ACO196, one year after the previous battle, in response to Quatra's Waltz Gun to the Gone World call to abandon war completely and have no need for dams, Hero and Trover sent their aircraft, and Duo himself arrived with the aircraft. Quattle and Duo put the four gun dams, excluding Gohi's Nataku, on the waste resource. It was then placed into orbit towards the sun. Just then, the Gundam Death Scythe Hell Mariamnia, army known as the God of Death, who are professionals in combat engineering, abducts Lilina, fight with the... Oh God, no, I'm not even going to try. Army satellite, leave the recovery of the damned Quattle and meet up with Hero. 18,999 infiltrated, mastermind Dekim Barton's trump card. Colony drop is successfully stopped. However, the army begins an invasion of Earth with a large army of new MS serpents. They take control of the presidential palace of the unified Earth nations in Brussels. Quatra risked his life. The duo board the partner they brought back with them and join up with Zex, Noin, the eight and nine German, I guess. Uh, Zex? No, Zex is six, idiot. Noin is nine. 69 half and others who were fighting an overwhelmingly disadvantaged just the, just the battle i that's an english word i can't pronounce they once again throw themselves into the battle to end the battle so yeah i guess it makes as much sense as the 40k law anyway getting on to actually building this thing itself after reading all the instructions carefully before assembling i got to work now, to begin with, the sprues themselves are very, very good. One problem I have with Games Workshop sprues is the numbering system. They kind of just put everything in all over the place, and then suddenly you go from like 1, 2, 3, 12, 100. It's just, it's a bit of a mess. Gumpler sprues are very, very well organized. They go sequentially in numbers, very easy to find, very well labeled. And to begin with, when I was starting with the first part, which is the body, I was fairly excited. It looks like there are two XB sprues, probably because you need to do things on two halves, but I figured, all right, all of the body parts are gonna be on these two sprues, and then all the other parts are on different sprues, and that, that's kind of how it works. No, that's not how it works. You just have to use every single sprue all the time. I figured obviously at some point we'd, from the different colors, you'd get them from the different colored sprues. But by the end of just doing the body, I basically have every single sprue out on my desk because I had to get parts from everywhere. Even parts that were the same color, but all over the place. The only sprues I didn't have on the desk by this point were the ones for the wings, which are obviously giant big pieces, which clearly wouldn't go on the body. So those were the only sprues that I just didn't have. I had everything else. Additionally, whilst the push fit for Games Workshop are all kind of chunky pieces, apart from maybe a couple of arms here, the Gumpler pieces, and maybe it's specifically because this is a master grade, some of these pieces are very, very small. And whilst they do push together quite nicely, so sometimes they're not super fiddly, it is still very difficult, especially with someone with my horrific claw-like talony fingers. It's just really don't do well for this kind of small work. Also, it was quite hot whilst I was doing this, and so my hands were getting quite sweaty, which also didn't help at all. In the end, I managed to get the body together quite quickly and quite easily 
actually, even though there were small parts, the instructions are just so well detailed. And these pictures are amazing for putting this stuff together. I had to use my phone a few times to work out some of the instructions. Overall, it was very nice to put together. And then we move on to the head, which is an even smaller, even fiddlier piece. Making the head was the only time I actually got myself injured doing this. And it wasn't because I was using the tools wrong. It was because I was probably too lazy to cut my nails at some point. So my nails were a little bit long. In trying to put two of these pieces together that were quite small and quite close, I slipped and jammed one of my thumbnails into my other thumb. Again, very small pieces, quite sweaty, so a bit slippery as well. Didn't lose the piece, fortunately. And in the end, I did cut my nails. You can actually see in the time lapse here that there's a set of nail clippers for a bit while I cut my nails to make sure it doesn't happen again. There are also stickers as well. And most of these go on the head. There's another one that goes somewhere else. But these are very, very small. And again, very fiddly to get into the right place. I managed to do it. But again, small, fiddly parts. At the end of the day, I didn't manage to get the head done. And that's kind of how the rest of the build proceeded for the next six hours, including a break for lunch. There were some smaller bits. Some bits were more of a nightmare. There's bits on the waist that really suck to get together properly. But some of the bigger parts, like the arms and the legs, were pretty easy to fit together, especially with some of these bigger parts. And the different colors, the fact that I don't have to paint this thing, very, very nice. There's also this one sprue, which is the one sprue that has that one piece I don't need to use. It's like flexible and wibbly, which is really, really nice. It kind of has this rubber that you can put into places to make things a little smoother when they move. But yeah, it all clicks together really interesting moving parts especially on the wings that has a lot of different things you can do in terms of folding and the actual construction of them was really really clever although whilst they are very very clever they are also a bit of a nightmare to put together there's a lot of things that have to go right especially one of the pieces which you have to put a piece within a rubber ring it's quite solid in there quite a lot of friction but it has to be rotated in a certain way before you put two halves of the wing on top of each other to hide it because it's part of the mechanism for moving the wing but the fact that all of these pieces move the arms the legs the wings the body there's bits on the waist that flap around as well the head can open up or i think it's the chest opens up to reveal the pilot all without having to do any sort of painting on it as well all the pieces are all the right colors and you can prove it by painting or by putting in some lines into the dark recesses but you don't need to this thing looks fantastic when put together together. After six hours, finally complete. I haven't done the decals. Again, it was far too hot at the time and I couldn't be bothered, but the decals look quite interesting. It looks like you could kind of just rub them on like a temporary tattoo, which is quite cool. I'll certainly get around to doing that at some point. However, there is one issue once I'd finished the model that I had, and that was trying to pose this model. In this picture here, you can see that he's posing with the scythe in two hands, like holding him in two hands like he's going to hit you with it. I wanted that pose. I got the hands ready. I was trying to move the arms. And in trying to get this goddamn thing posed like this, I pulled an arm off. The hands kept falling off. The scythe fell off. His head fell off and broke into two pieces, which I had to rebuild. His waist fell off. His arm fell off again. A leg fell off. One of the foot pieces came off. So many of this thing just started to fall apart in front of me. And I thought it was put together quite solidly. I thought the push fit was really, really solid. But no, it just wasn't. And after about an hour of trying to pose this goddamn thing, I just had to put it in one hand and just have him posing like that, which looks fine. The one thing I think that people don't really realize is, yes, all these parts move and they're very, very cool. But the whole thing just feels a bit fragile. Now that I've put this thing in place and displayed it, which it is, that's what it is. It's a display piece. I don't want to move this thing again because I worry if I try and move a wing or try and show off how it moves, something's going to fall off. Maybe I've put it together wrong. Maybe I've done something wrong here, but it just, none of it feels rigid and solid. I, I certainly aren't worried that I'm going to, if I knock it over, it's going to shatter into a million pieces. And it's not like that. It's just that in trying to do some of the more complex movements with it, I feel like sometimes I would be worried that something's going to fall. So I'll put it on display and that's how I'll leave it. It's very, very high quality. The sprues and the plastic are amazing quality barely no mold lines at all very easy to get out of the sprues very nice to put together all the mechanisms work amazingly lovely stickers beautiful color it's all just a very very good piece very very fun model to put together but a model for display nonetheless and when people tell me that games workshop should be picking up some of the things that Gumpla are doing. Sure, in some respects, some of the moving parts are cool. Being able to swap out hands and stuff is very nice. But Games Workshop models are game pieces, first and foremost. I would not want to spend five hours or so picking up and putting down this model over and over again. It would fall over all the time. If I pick up Magnus the Red and I move him for five hours, I have no issues in thinking that he's going to stay solid. Obviously, he's not push fit, but that's my point, right? A Magnus that was push fit with movable wings, movable arms, interchangeable weapons would be very cool, but also far too much effort than it's worth. Think of a push fit model, something like the Ballistus Dreadnought. I could pick this up, I could throw it out a window and it would probably be fine because it's just a solid push fit 
Soviet build that is just constructed in a way for use on a tabletop. The Gundam models aren't made for this. So when people say Games Workshop should do some of the things Gunpla do, it's really not something you can compare. Maybe the stuff here you could do for a knight, for example, especially some of the moving parts. But again, knights aren't push fit and never have been push fit. And I imagine will never be push fit. The stuff that is push fit are some of your troops, some of the smaller to medium sized monsters and vehicles. I think the biggest thing in the Leviathan box was the psychophage. And that psychophage was six parts. It was the easiest, one of the better models to put together because it takes like two minutes. This Gunpla took six hours. Gunpla, I want to be a very, very nice, fun build that I do once and then leave it for display and maybe show it off here and there to move some of the pieces and then probably have an arm fall off and have to put it back on. I really enjoyed my first Gundam. Even though it was a harder grade, I still managed and I still had a good time with it. I may even get another one at some point because yeah, it's a lot of fun and it's something different to the Games Workshop stuff because again, I don't have to paint it. Once I've built it, it's done. But I don't think I can agree with the people who say that Games Workshop's models for push fit should be on the same level as Gunpla. They just don't compare. They're different use cases. And to be honest, I'm happy with the way the Games Workshop does their push fit. The fact that I can get a psychophage put together in six pieces in five minutes is far better than having to buy a Leviathan box and realizing that all the pieces are going to take six hours each just to get some moving hands that will probably fall off if you touch them wrong. So I highly recommend if you haven't given Gunpla a go, Give it a go. If you're someone who collects and builds a lot of Warhammer and wants to try something new and interesting, it's the way to go, I think. Maybe don't pick the one that you want to build based on just the name. Maybe actually have a look at the grade to make sure you understand what you're buying. And also make sure you have a phone that has Google Lens or that you know Japanese. Or maybe there's probably one version of this model that has the English instructions. Probably go and find that. If you have any comments or suggestions about what I've done right or wrong or your own views and experiences with Gundam and Gunpla, let me know in the comments below. I love to read all your comments, but that'll be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.